You know what time it is. It is Dynasty Waiver Wire time for you Dynasty DGENs out there like me who play in those 30 roster team, 16 team leagues, or whatever you play in, Deep Dynasty Waiver Wire. Let's just get right into it. Starting off with the quarterback position, we have only one Mason Rudolph here. Uh, I'm sure there's one or two more out there. I mean, Jake Hayner, if people dropped him because Rattler got the start. These are for Superflex, obviously. Time's ticking on Levis, man. Time is ticking on Levis, and and I don't know how much longer you can kind of keep rolling him out. Um, so Mason Rudolph is someone who, are you going to be excited to start him? No, but like in desperation, deeper league, Superflex, you know, are you going to have to potentially start him? It's a possibility. So um, Mason Rudolph for me is someone to be targeting in super flex leagues. By the way, um, give us a like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 700 subscribers before the end of the month. So I think we're about 40 away with 15 days left. So help us out there. Julius Chestnut, a name that's been constantly coming up on this show. If you've been watching this show, he's a name I keep throwing out there. Basically saying, hey, most people don't realize this. Julius Chestnut is the RB3 for the Tennessee Titans. And uh, Julius Chestnut, I've never uh, – I don't know anything about Julius Chestnut. I'll be completely honest. I know a lot about um, a lot of the players, you know, skill position players in the NFL. I don't really know much about um, Julius Ch Chestnut. He went to school at Sacred Heart, so I never really watched him play. Uh, he's been in the NFL for three years, and he has 10 career carries. But Tajay Spears got uh, hurt with a hamstring injury. Um, the, the Titans uh, uh, want to run the ball a lot, right? You, you see what they're giving to Tony Pollard. Um, they probably want to split that up a little bit. They don't want to give Pollard 20 touches a game necessarily. You know, they want to split that up. Julius Chestnut seemingly is the next one up in line, unless he's just a pure special teams player. Um, then they call up someone from a practice squad or something. Um, Julius Chestnut seems to be like he's going to be the RB2 there for the Tennessee Titans. And I'm just checking really, really quickly who they have on their practice squad. Um, and they have Jabari Small, who's a rookie out of Tennessee, um, who is uh, a small player. So I think they probably roll with, with Chestnut and maybe gets a little bit more of an expanded role. Cody Schrader, um, another guy that I constantly bring up on the on the waiver wire show, and I constantly tell you guys, there's like four or five teams out there where I basically want to roster all the running backs on their active roster. Rams are one of them. Chargers are one of them. Dolphins are one of them. Um, uh, Lions are another one. 49ers are another one. I think those are the five. I might be missing one or two there just because whoever gets work in those systems are, are going to be one, whoever is going to be the lead back is going to be valuable for fantasy. And two, those systems, most of them are going to be using multiple guys. So if you're the RB four, instead of being three injuries away, you're really two injuries away. RB three, you're really one injury away. So um, you know, Cody Schrader, RB4 for the Rams. He's on their active uh, roster. Obviously, he's behind Corum and Rivers and, and Kyron, but um, just someone to know. Rasheen Ali is another guy here. I think he's probably rostered in most leagues, uh, but in case that he's not, he's an interesting player that I liked coming out of college. He started off the year on IR, um, but, you know, Justice Hill is kind of the, um, the lightning to – to Derrick Henry's thunder a little bit. I'm not really sure if something happens to Henry, and God forbid it does, but if something happens to Derrick Henry, I don't think it's just going to be Justice Hill like, oh, Justice Hill's getting 15 carries a game. I think Justice Hill's role probably stays the same, and they use someone like Rasheen Ali. Keaton Mitchell, you know, still recovering from the ACL, haven't really heard much from him. So Rasheen Ali seems to be the type of running back that could take on 10 to 15 carries if they needed it in case something happens to Derrick Henry. Blake Watson, another guy that I've liked all offseason, all draft process. Uh, <clears throat> he continues to just stay on the active roster for the Broncos, which means they like him. Now, again, do they like him more for special teams? That's a possibility. But even with Audrey Estime coming off the IR, they, they still held on to Blake Watson as their RB4. The run game is just not working for um, for the Broncos. Javante Williams and Julio McLaughlin. It's just not working. Like, you're just not getting consistent production. They're also not getting many touches either, but um, you know, 3.6 yards per attempt for Javante Williams is incredibly, incredibly disappointing. 
Um, he does have 20 catches on the year, which is fine. Um, and Jaleel McLaughlin, to be honest, hasn't really been much better. Um, 3.2 yards per attempt. He's actually been worse than um, than um, Javante Williams and 2.3 yards per reception. I wouldn't be surprised if they make a uh, make a move. Obviously, Audric Estime is going to get more run here. and They're going to see what they have in him. But what if they start to use Blake Watson more in that receiving role um, type of thing? So I uh, still think he's worth a stash. Pierre Strong Jr., keep trade cuts, RB95. You have uh, Jerome Ford also getting injured. Now there's rumors of Nick Chubb beginning to come back, but they're probably going to take it a little slow with those guys, um, I would assume. Um, Cleveland generally uses two running backs, in, in even when Chubb was in his prime. You know, this iteration of the Browns under – Stefanski always uses two running backs. I think Strong probably complements Chubb a little bit better than Foreman does, just in terms of his receiving work and things like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if, like, you know, we're looking at Pierre Strong and he's getting seven touches a game with like two, two or three catches. Um, and that, you know, as bad as that sounds, if you're getting two or three catches, that's potentially, um, you know, that's potentially in deep dynasty leagues a, a start here. Dearness Johnson, keep trade cut 105. Hopefully um, you maybe picked him up when you started seeing the ETN news and, and injury news and all of that. Uh, Dearness Johnson now um, with uh, Tank Bigsby also being banged up. Uh, Dearness Johnson could be in line to have like a good start or two coming up. He had eight touches last week against the Bears, um, 28 yards on the ground, 16 yards through the air. Um, I expect that to increase um, if if either Tank or um, ETN is going to miss time. And Deon- Dernish Johnson's played um, fifty six percent played fifty six percent of the snaps. He's been around for a while. He's been around since twenty nineteen. Um, obviously, he was with the Browns there for a little bit. We saw him have some good games with the Browns, 146 yards on the ground, 123 yards on the ground, 99, 95. Those are all with the Browns. We've seen this guy look good before when he gets called upon. Uh, he can catch passes. He had a seven catch game one, one time. So, um, you know, we've seen him look good and, um, you know, like if he gets, if he gets the call for, uh, the Jaguars who I believe have a good schedule, um, here, uh, uh, they play the Patriots, but, um, you know, I, I think Dearness Johnson could be definitely start worthy. Tyler Goodson, um, brought him up a couple weeks ago, maybe last week as well. I can't remember. Um, you know, Jonathan Taylor is going to probably miss another couple of games. I would assume maybe at least one more game. Uh, usually high ankle sprains, you miss like either no games or three games. That's just kind of the weird thing about it. Uh, so I think we're, we're, we're what are we on uh, two weeks without, Jonathan Taylor. So Tyler Goodson, I think um, this could be a situation of like a Goomba Wale and Cam Akers where we all thought it was going to be Cam Akers and it was Cam Akers in week one or, you know, the first week that Mixon was out and then a Goomba Wale just looked better. And then a Goomba Wale had a big game. Trey Sermon, it was him in um, the first week that Jonathan Taylor was out and Trey Sermon had a good game, but more because of volume than anything. And then Tyler Goodson, who's played 40% of the snaps each of the last two weeks, um, has just looked better than Sermon. And what if they give him a little bit more run? Anyone who's getting uh, double-digit touches with three or four catches is potentially start-worthy in, in PPR leagues. So eight carries, 51 yards, four catches, 14 yards. Like, you're going to take that to the bank. You're going to take those 10, 10 and a half points to the bank uh, if you started Tyler Goodson. I think you could potentially get a good week out of him this week. Miles Gaskin, uh, he is on the Vikings. He's their RB3. Um, you know, just with the potential Aaron Jones hip injury, uh, make sure that Gaskin's rostered because it, the, the path for him to be relevant for a game or two is there, depending on if Aaron Jones is going to miss some time. Frank Gore Jr., kind of the same thing with, um, you know, with the James Cook toe injury, which is always a little bit concerning. I know it felt like he was going to play this week and he didn't. So that makes us think, oh, this injury might not be that serious. I've seen this happen a lot, like where you think the guy's going to play, he's questionable. And then he doesn't play, and then it turns out the injury is a little bit more serious than um, than we, uh, um, you know, than we thought. Sorry, I was just reading a strange message, but um, 
so you know that's that's something I, I always have in the back of my mind. Frank Gore Jr. is the RB three if James Cook does miss time. And we, obviously Ray Davis look awesome. You know, I assume Ray Davis is on rosters. Ty Johnson's going to be kind of the receiving guy. Uh, but, you know, the path for Frank Gore Jr. Uh, is there now, right? We see the path. Sione Vaki, I keep bringing up constantly. He's on the Lions. By the way, Craig Reynolds also. I actually think Craig Reynolds is probably more widely available than Sione Vaki. Vaki's a rookie, so that means people are going to probably hold on to him a little bit more. Um and then Craig Reynolds is the RB3. If something were to happen to Montgomery or Gibbs, it's probably going to be Craig Reynolds getting the expanded role, but it could be Vaki. Both those guys should be rostered, in my opinion. Another guy that I brought up literally every single week in this Dynasty Waiver Wire show is Patrick Taylor. And um, basically saying, hey, 49ers, one of those teams. I want all the running backs. Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, he's going to miss some more time. He's going to be out until early November. So we got two, three more weeks of no McCaffrey at least. Um, Jordan Mason. And the reason why I was bringing up Patrick Taylor and I was telling you guys, Jordan Mason before this year, even in college, I think his the most carries he had um, in college was like 150 carries. And so when I see that, I always get a little bit worried. 172 carries with Georgia Tech, um, uh, Jordan Mason had in 2019. That was his career high. His career high there. He did have, um, oh no, I thought he had 43 catches. I thought that was crazy. Um, and then, so I, you know, seeing that you always get a little bit worried about like, well, you know, uh, how long are these guys going to last? Are they going to get beat up? Jordan Mason this year in, in, um, you know, in six games, 115 carries. So, you know, if he, if he didn't miss time in this game, he was going to approach, um, you know, he's going to be 130 carries maybe already in six games or like already getting close to his career high. Um, in college or um, professional. Anyways, uh, Patrick Taylor, um, you know, if Mason misses a game, it's going to be at least the RB2. And I don't put it past Kyle Shanahan. We've seen this before. Oh, uh, who is it? Uh, Moster gets hurt. Oh, Trey Sermon, third round pick. You're up next. Nope. It is Elijah Mitchell, right? Uh, undrafted rookie comes out of nowhere. I don't put it past them. I know Garendo came in and was the guy after um, Mason got hurt. That could have been very specific to that game, and that's what they were going to roll with because maybe Garendo got the work, but maybe they start to work um, Patrick Taylor a little bit more in. Um, so he's a guy that definitely needs to be grabbed, in my opinion. And Taylor did have five carries and a catch. So um, And Taylor played just as many snaps as Garendo. I know we love the rookies – and Garendo had a big run. Um, it would I wouldn't put it past the the 49ers to like, oh no, actually it's Patrick Taylor. Sean Tucker is an obvious one. Um, if he's if someone dropped him, I liked Sean Tucker coming out of college. He was an undrafted guy. Um, the reason a big reason why he was undrafted is he had a heart issue around the time of the combine and the um uh and the NFL draft. So like people just didn't really get to see him. Um, so he went undrafted. Dude was super productive, kind of a freak athletically. Like he's he's uh, you know running back size five ten two ten, but he runs like a four three three. He's super fast. Um, so it's really nice to see that come to fruition. Um, I don't blame you if you drop them because it's an undrafted rookie who got nothing last year when there was kind of opportunity to get something. So uh, obviously he needs to be picked up if if he's out there. Hassan Haskins um, keep bringing him up over and over. Chargers. One of those teams, right, that um, I want all their running backs. Hassan Haskins, uh, obviously we saw Kamani Vidal with a big touchdown catch. And Kamani Vidal, I assume, is widely rostered. Hassan Haskins didn't really play much last week. Um, but, you know, if something were to happen to J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards already on IR, it's probably going to be a little bit more of a committee with Haskins and uh, Kamani Vidal. Into the wide receivers, Kayshawn Boutte or Booty. Not really sure exactly how to say it. I've heard both. Kayshawn Boutte, if you guys don't know something about him, was, I believe, um, a five-star recruit coming out of high school, if I remember correctly. Um, I was trying to remember if he is a five-star uh, recruit. Mm, yeah, uh, here's an article on him. Kayshawn Boutte is Louisiana's next five-star receiver. Like, um, he he had a lot of hype coming uh, out of out of high school 
and after his freshman year in college. His freshman year in college, guys, um, was actually pretty impressive for a freshman. I'm just pulling up the exact numbers here. Uh, his freshman year in college, he had 10 games, 45 catches, 735 yards, and five touchdowns. That's impressive for a freshman. His second year, his sophomore year, 38 catches, 500 yards, nine touchdowns in six games. So he was on pace for well over 1,000 yards, double-digit touchdowns, uh, you know, 70, 80 catches. And then he, I think he uh, he broke his ankle, I believe. And then um, his junior year, he had 48 catches, 538 yards, and two touchdowns. He regressed a little bit. I think partly that could be because of the ankle. It's funny because when it comes to injuries, we put a lot of like, oh, ACL, Achilles, we got to give him a year. We don't really do that with broken bones. And I think we need to start doing that. We're seeing it with guys like Pollard last year, um, Mark Andrews this year, Tank Dell this year. Um, you know, these these broken bones, I think, also affect people for the year after. So I don't know the severity of the injury in college. But anyways, he also had some character issues as well. And that's why he fell to the fifth round. Didn't do anything last year. But he's out there playing, um, I believe, the most snaps for the um, for the Patriots. It's, it's um, you know, Demario Douglas is out there. Um, obviously, uh, Jalen Polk is out there. And then, you know, Boutte is out there, I think, the most. I'm just going to double check that. Um, the wide receiver, yeah, he played 55 of 66 total snaps, Boutte did. Uh, next closest receiver was Polk with 43, Douglas with 41. So Boutte is the guy out there. We saw him catch the big pass. Um, he's definitely worth an ad because, again, you know, some hype coming out of college and all that. And I'm just looking at the pronunciation. It's Kayshawn uh, Booty. It's Kayshawn Booty. So, um, Cedric Tillman, I, before I went live, Amari Cooper traded to the Bills. Cedric Tillman is the next up in line. I assume people probably picked him up when he was getting a little bit of hype in the offseason and maybe they dropped him. Um, but he's going to be the next in line. I don't think Elijah, Mo uh, Elijah Moore's uh, role changes or Jerry Judy's. I think Tillman kind of just replaces Cooper in terms of uh, the snap percentages and stuff. Also, also uh, Jamari Thrash is on the team in case you want to grab him. He's a rookie. I think he's more of an Elijah Moore replacement than anything else. Um, Jalen Coker, Coker, he's been on this um, – He's been on this show um, each of the last couple of weeks, I believe. Um, you know, Jalen Coker came in last, um, you know, not not this last week, but in week five. Um, undrafted rookie, by the way, played at Holy Cross, um, came in, and really his first action that he saw, he had four targets, four catches, and 68 yards. Last week, three catches, three targets, 30 yards. He's He's out there. He's playing. Over 50% of the snaps each of the last two weeks, 65% last week. Um, that's pretty impressive for an undrafted rookie. It means he has some skill um, to get out there. So it, do I expect much from him in terms of production this year? No. But when I see a rookie do that, I'm for sure gonna be um I'm for sure gonna be grabbing him. So um that's definitely um someone that I want to um be rostering here. Kevontae Turpin, if you didn't grab him last week, this is your last chance. I mentioned to you to grab this guy. Um, um, I mentioned to you guys last week to grab him. Um, while Brandon Cooks is out, Kevontae Turpin is going to be a solid play, guys. He just is. Not only is that he their kick returner, so you always have the chance to get the touchdown, the punt return, kick return, touchdown. Uh, he's their special teams guy. Uh, but he has five targets and seven targets each of the last two weeks, four catches, 50 yards, four catches, 24 yards last week. He's always going to get a rush or attempt or two as well. So Turpin um, is becoming like a low end flex at this point. Mason Tipton and Bub means I couldn't figure out where they were on the keep trade cut because the website failed on me as I was doing this. I'm going to double check right now. Uh, Mason Tipton is the wide receiver 134 according to keep trade cut. Bub Means is the wide receiver, uh, 132. Both Shahid and Alave are probably going to miss time. Alave with the concussion probably misses a game. He's had a couple concussions. Um, Mason Tipton um, as well. I think Mason Tipton is more of the Shahid replacement, and Bub Means is more of the Alave replacement just in terms of how they're going to play them. So both those guys should be on rosters 
don't expect anything from them, especially with Spencer Rattley at the quarterback position, but um, guys that just could, what if they do flash and then everyone's going to be clamoring for them. So definitely need to add them. DJ Turner, I mentioned him last week with Devontae Adams being out and now being traded. DJ Turner is getting a lot of playing time. Um, you know, he's getting a lot of playing time out there. And, uh, you know, any any players that are um, any any players that are out there playing 75% of the snaps and things like that, they definitely need to be rostered because they could, especially in like best ball leagues, they could just have a, a boom game. So uh, 74% of the snaps in week five, 67% in week six. So he's going to continue to be out there. They like to give him carries. I think he's a little bit of a speedster. He had four targets each of the last two weeks. Um, I think he's a speedster. 4.26 um, uh, 40 yard dash. So he's a, he's kind of a burner here. Into the tight ends, guys, we have um, Jeremy Ruckert is someone that is interesting. I don't know if um, – I'm going to double-check this. But uh, Jeremy Ruckert, if you don't know, he's a former third-round pick, I believe. Yeah, third-round pick by the Jets in the 2022 NFL Draft. He had a little bit of hype coming out of him that he could be a solid player. Just hasn't done anything in his career really up until this point. Um Obviously, you have Tyler Conklin on the team, but Conklin's snap share dropped to 73% last week. And I think that's a little bit interesting. Um, a little bit interesting with the change of offensive coordinator. Um, that to see Conklin, who is playing 90, here's a snap percentage for Conklin: 90, 93, 92, 92, 82, 73. So I see a trend here a little bit. And then I look at Jeremy Ruckert, and what do I see? I see 33, 37, 45, 32, 33, 33, 48%. So we saw Jeremy Ruckert jump up 15% snap share than basically what he's been doing all year. Are they kind of saying, hey, we maybe like this guy a little bit more. He can provide us with a little bit more. I think it's possible. So someone that uh, in those deeper leagues, I wouldn't mind – uh, grabbing Kate Sto Stover is another one of these guys um, who is a rookie. Now, rookie Rucker wasn't a rookie, but Kate Stover is. Um, Dalton Schultz, he's on the Texans, by the way, tight end. Uh, Dalton Schultz has not really looked good. Um, now, he does have, you know, five, 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 six, and eight targets the last four weeks, but Dalton Schultz, he's not really doing much with them. Three for 34 is fine. Four for 34, okay. Four for 27, just like not really that exciting. 7.94 yards per reception. Uh, he just doesn't look that good out there. I don't know what it is, but Dalton Schultz just doesn't look good. And technically, Dalton Schultz did not start the game. And technically, Cade Stover did. Now, Cade Stover didn't do anything in terms of production, but if you guys remember, this is CJ Stroud's boy from Ohio State. Um, fourth round pick. So like pretty good draft capital and his snap share jumped from, uh, here's a snap share over the first six weeks, 19 to 23 to 28 to 32 to 35 to 52. It's literally gone up every week this year. Um, and he's gone from beginning of the year playing 20 to 25% of the snaps to getting over half the snaps, um, this last week. Is there a little bit of a changing of the guard here? Do I think, that uh, Cade Stover can provide a little bit more than what Dalton Schultz, who quite honestly, like he's put up numbers just from being out there, but he's not doing anything impressive with it. So something to keep in mind. And then Grant Calcaterra um, is going to probably replace Dallas Goddard. I don't know what the severity of um, Dallas Goddard's injury is. I'm going to double check that. Um, oh, a uh, hamstring, a hamstring. So, Grant Calcaterra came in. Um, he had four targets, four catches, 67 yards. Like, could he just continue to do that while Goddard's out? Yeah. Is he going to be a stud? No, because you have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. But uh, uh, he played 92% of the snaps. Any tight end that's playing 90% of the snaps is going to be, um, you know, is probably going to give you a pretty safe floor of two to four catches at least and, and 30 to 50 yards or something. Okay? So, um but um, that is it, guys. That is it for our Dynasty Waiver Wire. Hopefully that helps you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, help us get to 700. I'll catch you all in the next video.